So, do you want to know how to transform your 3D model into an amazing exploded axonometric using SketchUp and Photoshop? That's what we got for today's video. I hope you like it. What's up guys? Ographics in here. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to visualize the Button Ten Houses from the famous Brazilian architect Paulo Mendes da Rocha. This project was really important during the 60s, and its construction took place in the middle of a discussion about the industrialization process in Brazil. These houses came as a kind of an experiment, and the architect himself was going to live in one of them. Well, that's a short version of a really great story about these houses. I'm going to leave an interesting article about the Butenten houses in the video description. It is in Portuguese, but you can definitely use the translator to get an English version. The author even compared these houses with the Villa Savoie from Le Corbusier because of its eager for a structural rationalization that wasn't a thing in the period. Alright, so the video will be divided into two parts, the SketchUp one, which includes the most essential step of this type of axonometric. It is short, but very important, so pay a close attention, because doing these SketchUp steps correctly will ease out our process later. Then the second part, Photoshop, to bring it all together and add cutouts, colors and effects. Of course, you can swap the 3D software for the one that you prefer using it. Awesome! At the end of the video, I'm going to provide the trees from the image as a brush file for free, so be tuned. Now, without further ado, let's jump into the tutorial. In this diagram, I'm going to move the top part of the house to reveal its interior and also highlight the concrete volume. Then, go ahead and swap the camera mode to parallel projection and click on the ISO view. This time I'm not going for a perfect isometric, but instead I'm going to tilt the camera a little bit till the top part detaches visually from the rest. Perfect. Zoom in a bit to frame it properly and we now have our scene done. Oh, and I also removed the grass texture and left a solid color only. That will help over the Photoshop part. Now comes the important steps I was talking about. We have to tweak the style settings to then export the files. We're going to need basically three types of images, so pay attention here. The first one is a solid color base. So turn off all profiles and edges under the style tab. Then go to file, export to the image. This one will be a PNG. Make sure you've got a big image size over here on the options. I would suggest even going huge on the size. For example, over 6000 pixels. Then, in Photoshop, we can shrink down the size in half. Doing like this will condense the pixels and avoid some serrated lines. Alright, first export is done. For the second one, you will need to activate the shadows. Hide the top part for a moment. And select the hidden line preset style. Make sure you've got a nice shadow design setting. How the shadow affects your building can really add up to the final result. I've selected the settings that create this effect here on the walls and emphasizes the fact that the stair is detached from the floor. Also uncheck the edges and profiles as well. And we are now left with only the actual shadows in a blank canvas. This will enable us to tweak each layer individually, which is the key point of this type of axonometric as you can see. Export it as a PNG image just like the previous one. Now export one exactly like this, but with the top showing. We did it twice so the top wouldn't affect the base, got it? You can hide the bottom for this one, or what I actually prefer, hide it with a mask over Photoshop. Then finally for the last export, an only line image. So select the hidden line style again, and this time turn off the shadows and leave the edges turned on. I'm not a big fan of the profiles option, so turn it off. And this time, let's choose a PDF file. Awesome, that's all we need from SketchUp. The first part is done. Now, let's head on to Photoshop to stack everything up. Now, in Photoshop, import all the files into a new document. 
I'm using 3000 pixels wide and 4000 pixels tall. Make sure you've got everything aligned. You might need to resize the PDF file to match the image files. It's not difficult, it's just a thorough process. Now check how the layers tab should be on your file to begin with. We should organize it as we move through the process. And by the way, you're going to see me rearranging the layers a couple of times in this video. This is a crucial move so you can be efficient in the long run. Alright, now you can begin however you feel like it. I'm going to start by fixing this grass and taking out the SketchUp look this base image has. I'm using the color range selection tool to select most of it and then a brush to paint the rest. And as always guys, keep in mind that I'm trying to convey what's essential in this workflow. I cannot cover all the little steps in this video, otherwise it would be a boring 2 hour long tutorial that nobody would like to watch it. So slow down the video if needed and drop any questions below that you might have. Now here's where you can see why saving everything in a separate file is so important. We can hide unnecessary parts pretty easily, for example with this wooden panel here. I'm going to leave only the outlines and hide what's inside. Use a mask and around 100% hard brush for this step. See, if we have exported all styles in one single file, we wouldn't be able to remove all these lines. And to be quite honest, it looked really heavy with the panel lines, and the overall canvas balance wasn't good with it. It drew too much attention to that area. Remember that with the shadow image file, and sometimes also with the lines file, you have to set the layers blend mode to multiply in order to show only the black colors and hide the whites. Next, I'm going to copy this concrete wall to place on the bottom as a reference for the dashed lines. So I select it using the polygonal lasso tool, duplicate it, then move to the bottom holding shift so it maintains the vertical alignment. Finally, use the clone stamp tool to repair any areas that need to be filled. As I always say, use as many layers as needed to create your images. It doesn't matter what type of image you will be, realistic renders, collages, diagrams, axonometrics, whatever, each element has to have its own layer. And I also suggest using the adjustment layers at the top instead of applying directly to a layer. If you've been following the channel for a while now, you already know all of this, but it's always good to remember, right? Alright, so I used this pale orange color for the background, but this is just a testing. Later, you're going to see me swap in it to compose it better with the grass and wood. Good, we can now use the pen tool to add our dashed lines. Just make sure to set up the dash length and gap in a reasonable size. Subtle is better, this line is just there to indicate where the house top would sit. A crucial step on all types of visualizations is the layer organization. I've talked about creating as many layers as needed, but if you don't categorize them using folders and color codes, all that good work is in vain. Therefore, you're going to often see me moving things around in the file. A render post-production usually has the same type of folders across files. One for vegetation, one for cutouts, one for lighting, one for texture, and so on. But with axonometrics and diagrams, you will usually figure them out as you go. If the shadows are too light, you can tweak some settings on SketchUp to make it darker before exporting. Or here in Photoshop, you can add a levels adjustments and darken the blacks a little bit. Then, I've duplicated this level adjustment to also apply the same effect on the shadow from the top part. The overall concrete grey tone was too dark for this image, so I applied another levels adjustment, but this time on the base so I could brighten up a bit. Remember that you can apply these layers adjustments to only a folder or a layer by clipping the effect. Ctrl Alt G for that. I really love to use a white stroke to create emphasis and hierarchy in a drawing. 
I feel that it adds up to the contrast between elements that every composition needs. So using a pen tool, we can do that. You should do these lines in one move, and then if there's something you need to erase, just use a mask to hide. For example where the stair was, I didn't want any lines going over it, so I used a mask. I've changed the sky to a bluish color and it suited the image much better. Therefore, it was time to get the wood colors right. So, using the magic one on the base layer, make sure to uncheck the contiguous box this time. Select all the wood in this image. And then, on top of the base folder, but below everything else, create a new layer and paint it with a solid color. I'm using this tone from the previous sky color that we had. We now have this solid feel that is independent from the rest, but with all the shadows and lines applied to it. Now to match the grass green color to the rest, I feel that the green has to be a bit more towards a yellowish slash orange tint, so apply a hue and saturation adjustment layer clipped to the grass. With the shadow image that we have exported from SketchUp, we have a decent shadow already. But I feel that we can intensify a bit more by adding some accents here and there. So do that with the aid of selections and use a round soft brush. I also like to slightly flatten the brush so it looks like it's on the floor. After that, I added a dark blue color clipped to the strokes and shadows so we could have a tint of blue instead of a plain pure black. Now for composition purposes, so it looks better on the final result, I fixed the site where it meets the next door neighbor. Alright everyone, we have done everything related to the house, now let's move on into the vegetation and extras. We can place the Butenton house photo into our Photoshop file to trace over the tree using a hard brush. Remember to left click once hold shift and click another time to create straight lines. And that's honestly exactly what I did here, couldn't be simpler. To help you out, I'm going to create a brush preset out of these trees and place it into our gum rubber page so you can download it for free. Check the link in the video description for that. Remember that you can also get the PSD and all the base files from this image to follow along the tutorial and learn it all. You then support the channel so I can keep creating these free YouTube videos for you guys. Alright, after all the trees were placed, we can duplicate each layer with Ctrl J and using the transform box, Ctrl T, make it flat on the ground. If you hold Ctrl when pulling the transform box nodes, you will automatically distort these nodes, so it makes it easier to place on the ground. Then fix any parts with your brush if needed, and finally reduce the opacity to around 30 to 50%. For the people we're going to insert in this image, I'm going to use the scale figures pack. If you'd like to grab a copy for you, check the link in the video description. Well, you can use any type of cutouts here, but since this image has the sketch slash drawing look with the black lines and all, I suggest using something done by hand or an artistic cutout. When placing these cutouts on axonometrics or diagrams, scale all the cutouts at the same time and make sure you know the height of something on the building, for example the window or door frame, so you can get the size correctly. Now to give more details to the cutouts, I'm overlaying a paper texture to the people. It is easier to place all the cutouts in a folder and then clip the paper texture to this folder. Next, I'm also adding shadows, just like we did over the trees. Now 
Then to finish off a wide stroke to make the cutouts stand out. We are about to finish here, so to give a bit more texture and details to the sky, you can add a noise filter. Just make sure you have the monochromatic option enabled. And that is it guys. Actually, as the very last step, I'm adding some details using a graphic tablet. It is a totally optional step, but I feel that it gives identity to the drawing. Alright, so if you learned something from this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I post weekly videos all about architecture visualization and representation. So if you enjoyed this one, there are plenty more over the channel for you. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to drop your questions below. Also, the model was provided by the website Exemplary Architecture. Link in the video description if you want to check it out. Alright, that's it. As always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye!